All right, so you have Flux and you're now doing GitOps and that's awesome. And it's now time to scale, right? But you need to address things such as multi-cluster, policy and security, developer productivity and experience, and giving developer observability over the applications. You need to target SSO and so on and, and so many others. So you need to take your Flux CD and GitOps to an enterprise level, right? So you can scale in your organization. So in the next 15 minutes or so, we're gonna guide you through a process or option that you have to quickly get there. So, tag along. All right, let's see what we have here. First, on my left, um, I have a Git repo. And in that Git repo, I'm gonna be storing all my infra definitions. And that include the policies uh, and the controls that I want to enforce. I'm also going to be storing my cluster information. So this is basically where I'm going to be binding my policies to and also some are back. All right, so let's have a quick look at the actual Git repo as, as an example. Here I have it broken down by clusters, plans, policies, and are back. And, and, um, and if we look further, for example, into policies, this is where I'm actually breaking down policies by different environments. I can break it down by different projects. For example, this, this is just kind of one of the examples or one of the ways you can leverage it. And if I go inside dev, for example, I have my policy definition here. Um, I'm saying, hey, this is the ingress controller I want to run. This is the resource consumption, the network policy, and so on. And um, I'll have Flux use Shipa to create these policies and enforce these policies automatically as applications are deployed and, and point to it. Um, one of the, after my policies are defined, for example, the, the other folder I have here is clusters. I have broken it down by different environments in you, as well, and you can break it down by different kind of ways you want. But if I see dev, I can see kind of the cluster definition. So this is how Shippo will connect to your cluster. And I'm saying which policy frameworks should be bound to this cluster here in this definition. Um, so if you bind um, policy dev and policy staging, for example, to the same cluster, Shippa automatically create a namespace called Shippa-dev and Shippa-staging. And everything that is deployed pointing to either policy is gonna be deployed in that namespace. Um, you can go further and more definitions I have here is for example, RBAC. Um, this is another challenge as well when you're dealing with some of the GitOps tools, such as uh, Flux CD. You want to make sure that you're leveraging, for example, SSO and connecting to your Azure AD, for example. So because Flux is leveraging Shipa, you can actually use that to map your AD users and teams and permissions um, across multiple clusters. Um, that's just an example of the Shipa um, Flux CD infra Git repo. Um, you can clone this later on if you want. So let's go back to the diagram. On the other side, what I have here is actually my Kubernetes cluster. And in that cluster, I have Flux, for example, installed. And I also have a Shipa provider. What a Shipa provider is, in this case, is the provider that's going to be making the connection between your Flux install, as well as your Shipa Cloud account or your Shipa self-hosted account. If you don't have an account yet, you can create it apps.shipa.cloud. But let's say here, I already have my account and on the side, I have my Shipa Cloud instance running, right? Um, I'm gonna be using cloud, but you can have self-hosted the same model. What I have now is I'm gonna be telling Flux to basically watch over my policies um, directory inside my infra repo. And once Flux tracks changes or additions here, what Flux is gonna do is, is gonna communicate with my local Shipa provider in that cluster. And my Shipa provider will then start creating the policies that I have defined in that framework. You, you can have, as, as seen before, you can have different policies broken down by kind of dev, QA, and production, or as based on, um, on your individual projects or, or, or teams and so on. But Flux is gonna monitor that directory, and as you drop in additional policies, Flux will communicate with Shipa 
and we'll start um, creating those policies on non -SHIPA. So policy one, policy two, policy three and four, for example, here on this example, if you follow kind of my funky arrows, you can see. All right, so policy definitions are stored in Git. Flux is monitoring every, every change. And as you're dropping new policies or make changes, everything is getting deployed or created in Shippa. So those policy frameworks are being created in Shippa directly from Flux. But it's not because it's happening from Git that it makes it hard for you to keep control and, and observe everything that is happening. So you can log into your Shippa Cloud dashboard account. And if you come here on your left, you're gonna see your policy frameworks. You can see all the policy frameworks that are created and managed by Flux. Flux and Shippa are managing the uh, the drift detection and all, but you can see all the policies defined here, right? Um, and all the changes to your policy. So as a DevOps, for example, from here, you can implement hooks. So every change to your policy, you get an alert, for example, or deletion or addition of policies. So you can monitor everything that is happening. Let's go back to the uh, drawing board. Now, the second part that it's, it's, it's interesting and that, that's the part that facilitates the life when you are um, actually scaling Flux is the multi-cluster part, right? One is you're addressing the policy requirements. So every application deployed is going to have to comply with those policies. But now you are telling Flux, hey, monitor my clusters uh, or my cluster directory and bind these clusters or binding, bind these policies to these clusters. So you can tell Flux and that definition and say, hey, policy one and two, bind it to a GKE cluster, policy three to an AKS cluster, and policy four to an EKS cluster. For Flux to connect Shippa to your clusters and bind these uh, policy frameworks to your clusters, these clusters, they need to exist already, right? If you look at the definition that we have here for our cluster, I'm actually um, passing through Flux saying, hey, Shippa, here's the name of my cluster. Here is the endpoint that I want to connect to. And this is the service account that I previously created uh, for Shippa and the token for it. So it basically requires your cluster to be created and the service account for Shippa created. You can leverage any tool you have, such as Terraform, Pulumi, or other infrastructure as code, or whatever you're leveraging for automation to spin up the cluster, create the service account for Shippa, and then Flux is ready to bind or connect Shippa to that cluster and bind the policy framework. Let's go back to the uh, drawing board. Shippa is then going to bind this policy and policy one, for example, is going to turn into a namespace in your cluster, policy two, another namespace in GKE, policy three, a namespace in AKS. So these policies are going to turn into dedicated namespaces in your cluster and Flux won't see or won't be dealing with the multi-cluster. And what happens is, for example, let's say I have another directory or another Git repo, sorry. And in that Git repo, I'm going to be storing my apps definition, for example, let's say. And I have here app one or app two. You can break that into kind of different repos. But in this example, what I'm going to um, do as well is I'm going to tell Flux, hey, monitor my app one directory. And here I have my app one definition. As soon as the app one, there are changes to the Git repo, Flux is then gonna communicate with Shippa again and tell Shippa where to deploy that uh, or which policy framework to use when deploying app one. So let's say it's P1 or, or policy framework one, for example. On the app side, here's an example of my Git repo for my app, right? I have the directory for app one and app two and I'm hosting it on a, on a different registry. So the Git infra registry is actually managed by the DevOps or platform engineering team. And I can give other uh, reg, uh, repos to my developers. When it comes to Shippa implementing an app definition, I have app one and app two, but through Shippa, you can give a much simpler application definition to your developers, which makes it a lot easier for them to start using um, Kubernetes, GitOps, and everything that you're putting in place. An example of that app definition, for example, is here. Um, I have the name of the app. I have the name of the team, for example. Um, let's say in Shippa, I'm part of one or two teams, project one or project two team. I can put whatever team I'm part of that I want to be the owner of the app as a developer. Here I can say, hey Shippa, this is the policy framework that I want to use to deploy this application. 
So your developer could actually care less if if this is being deployed on GKE or AKS. The developer just points to a policy framework um, and Shippa will know um, where to deploy that application based on where the policy framework is bound to. I'm saying, hey, here is the description of my app and, and here are the tags or, or labels that should be added to my application. And, and as they deploy, for example, they can say, hey, this is the name of my app, for example, and here's the Docker image or my image that I want to use. Um, if I'm using a private image, if I'm exposing a specific port, so on and so forth, you can go down, you can go further and specify C names, environment variables, inject secrets, and network management, for example, all in a much more facilitated way. So it makes it a lot easier for your developers to compose applications in a very standard way. Um, let's go back to the drawing board. Flux doesn't know this application is actually being deployed on GKE. That's gonna be the communication between Shippa and, and the clusters driven through the policy framework. And the same thing if you have app two, for example, you can tell, hey, Flux, here's the definition for app two. And as part of that definition, I have policy three as the destination. So Flux hands it off to Shippa and Shippa says, okay, policy three, then I have to create that application on AKS in that P3 namespace because that's where this policy is bound to. Last but not least, another point that helps you scale um, your, your Flux implementation in an enterprise manner is that then you have your Shippa Cloud dashboard, right? And directly from your Shippa Cloud dashboard, you can see your all your policy information, uh, controls that are being enforced, changes, and so on and your developers can see their applications. Um, so they can manage that dependencies, communication, and, and others. So as you use Flux and Chippa together to create your whole infrastructure, add users, add teams, resource control, policies, and your developers, they start deploying applications. The beauty is that everything gets centralized in a, uh, in a nice dashboard that you can use, uh, your DevOps team can use, platform engineering team, DevSecOps, and your developers, right? Here's an example. Um, you can see the applications deployed. One of the things that we see that is, is constantly a challenge for folks is once the apps are deployed and you start scaling the number of app services and developers deploying, it becomes super hard to know who owns what, right? And in case there are problems, who do we contact? Uh, so directly here, you can see the application owner. You know which policy framework this is using to, uh, to deploy the application uh, or controls that are being applied to this app. Um, you know where, um, which cluster this is located, if there are environment variables, secrets, C names attached to your application. So you can quickly understand the application or the services status from here. You also get that dependency map, right? So here is my app that was deployed. But here are all the objects that are related to this application, the status, the details. So if something is wrong, I can quickly understand my application architecture, what's wrong and how to troubleshoot it. The same thing on the network side, for example, you can see how your application is at or your service is connecting or communicating with other services. So it becomes a lot clearer now for the developer to support the apps, the SRE team or the platform team. More than that, as applications, they start getting traffic, you're gonna see some of the application performance here, um, how your application is, is performing from a resource consumption perspective, all the units that are deployed and the status. Um, you can see the life cycle. So you can go back to your DevSecOps team, for example, or resources and say, hey, here's everything that happened to the application, all the deployments that happened, who triggered, uh, when it happened, successful or not. You can see the log associated to this. If you have security scans embedded as part of your policy frameworks, for example, you can see all the runs and you can see all the reports directly from here, vulnerabilities. Your developers, they can create a webhook and connect their applications to incident management tools, such as Slack, PagerDuty and others. So everything that happens, like new deployments to this app, applications killed up or down and so on, you can get alerts right away, or if there are problems, you can create a ticket for you on PagerDuty and, and others. And if you are, uh, if you have the right permissions, you can create or customize the, pol the network policies that were applied to your application by default by the framework. Your developers can get a quick glimpse of how they can access the application through an endpoint, 
which they can expose or not using the network policies. Um, but if they choose to do so, they can send this endpoint to their end users, for example, and they can access that. Or if they want to use an internal DNS to reach their application and communicate service from service, they can see that directly from here. So one of the, one of the things that Chipa do for you is, as mentioned before, is Chipa integrates into your Azure AD or others using Sumo, for example. So you can import your teams and your users and everything that Flux is gonna do or the deployments that are gonna happen, create policies and, and so on, is gonna go through that and validate the users against your Azure AD, for example. So it solves your SSO problem right there. I hope that was helpful and could um, help you understand some of the options that you have to manage multi-cluster using Flux CD, um, manage policies, monitoring and giving a, a full developer portal or DevOps portals have set cops or SRE portals where you can see everything that is happening from a policy standpoint and from an application. We'll see you soon.